You know, editing a level is quite fun, but unless we have a way of saving it and then also loading it, it's just a waste of time. So in this episode, we're gonna focus on saving a level and also loading a level. What is up everyone? Welcome back to another episode. Just like the title suggests, we're gonna do some loading and saving in this episode. But before we get started, don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button to support the channel. We're almost at 100 subscribers, that would be cool to reach that goal. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. And we begin in our load and save class. And before we can save to a file and read a file, we need a file. So we're gonna make a text file and uh, it will be a public static void. It's static because we wanna use a static method. We don't wanna make an instance of this class every time we create something. Public static void create file and the file will be a text file and it won't be very difficult to create actually it's like two three lines we need the class called file and we can call it text file equals new file and we need to import it and the argument for file we can see we have file string url file string string file etc etc and uh, we're just going to make the first one or create the first one string so we're gonna say slash no we're not we're gonna say res slash and whatever we want to call the text file let's just call it test text file and it's very important that we use what type of file as well and if we wanted the file to be created elsewhere like on the desktop or some other file system or map rather then we would need to change up how we direct to it because it's starting out from our project folder or inside a project folder then it finds go in here it finds the rest folder as i told it to and then the file name dot txt so in this rest folder we should have a text file created i'm just going to drag this to the other screen and we'll see and uh, we go text file dot create new file two lines we get, we create a file and then we say where and we create it but we need to throw try and catch because this could be a address or place that doesn't exist so we need to surround it with a try and catch let's try and see if it works let's go to our playing class and in here in the constructor you can actually call it from wherever, but let's start from here. Load save dot create new file and save. Right now we have nothing. We can right click on rest folder and refresh, nothing. So let's see if we can create a file by running the game. We don't actually need to go in here, but the game is running. Let's close it. Right click on rest folder and refresh and we get the file. And if we check in our folder, we now have it here. Perfect. So now we created a file, it works. What we need to do now is to write to the file. So let's do that. To write to a file, we don't need a lot of code, but we need a new method. So public static void write to, to file. And just like above, we're gonna change it up later, but just now we need it to be very simple. And we also need a file to write to, so we copy that one. And to get some text on the file, we need to add a new print writer, as they are called. PW equals new print writer. And we need to import the class. And just like the file, it takes a lot of different arguments, but we're gonna go with the file since we, since we have it. So copy that inside. And it needs to be surrounded with a try and catch as well because the file might not actually exist. So, and now when we have the print writer set up, we just go print writer dot print if we want to print it once or print line if we want it to actually start from a new line every time. So we say hello from the other side. And then we can copy this. And here we can say, I must have called a thousand times. And if it works now, we should have 
two lines of uh, text, one that says hello from the other side, and the other one I must have called a thousand times. And then we go print and close it, which is very important. Otherwise you can have some serious errors. And let's run it. No, we don't run it. We need to comment that out and load save dot create a file. No, write to file because we already created the file and we're going to make a check later to see if the file already exists. Don't need to create a new one. So, but we're going to do that later. But right now, just write the file, save and run it. And we can close it right away. We don't need to go anywhere. And then we go res, refresh, open up, hello from the other side, it must call a thousand times. So let's just check our folder and see if it works here as well. Yep, it's the same file, but here you can open it up a different way. And it looks perfect, good. So now we can create the file by text file dot create new file, and then we can write to the file. Great, so let's see if we can read from a file. And we do that by adding yet another method, public static void read from file. And you guessed it, we're going to copy this file and add it here. But we're going to add a new file so we don't read from the same file that we created before. So we say just text.txt and we go into our folder manually the same folder as down here but we create a new text file we can copy that and uh, call it text.txt and in text.txt we say hello can you hear me i'm in california dreaming about who we used to be so let's save it now we have the text file in our REST folder, we can put that to the side, we can right click and refresh so it shows up, good. Then we add scanner sc equals new scanner and we import scanner java.util, not the other ones. And just like before, we can check what they take, they take a lot of different arguments, but we'll give it a file, the text file. And we also surround it with a try and catch. And once it's set up, we need a loop because there could be more than just one line. So we say while sc dot has next line. And if we read the text there, returns true if there is another line in the input of the scanner. So we're basically just checking, is there another line? And we need to place the text somewhere uh, but uh, we don't have any array or anything, so we just make it very simple. System dot out dot print. Come on, print line. And the text we get is sc dot next line, which returns a string. So instead of saving it anywhere, we just print it out to the console. So if we run it now, then we should get as many lines that there is in the text file. We will print it out into the console. So let's comment this out in the playing load save dot read from file. And now we have a different file, so we should not get the same file as test text file. So if we run it, we should get two lines in our console. And we did. Hello, can you hear me? I'm in California dreaming about who we used to be. All right, now when we can create a file, we can write to a file and we can read to a file. That's all we need in order to make our levels load and save. So all we need to do now is to manage our code in this load and save class so it looks cleaner and we can import a level and also export a level. So let's get that going. The easiest way to start is to go through what we actually need. And I think we're gonna need three methods to begin with. We need one where we save a two-dimensional integer array to a file. We have the two-dimensional integer array that is the entire level. Then we're going to need a load an integer array because every, every line is a new integer in the text file. So it will be a one-dimensional that we turn into a two-dimensional. And we also need a way of creating a new level with default values, which I think we're going to start with. So 
let's make a public static void and we can call it create level and it will take in a string name and also an integer array or idr and it's going to be a one dimensional instead of a two dimensional as we have up here but we're going to turn it from 2 into a 1D and then we're going to turn it from a 1D into a 2D. First up, we need a file. And just like we had up here, actually, let's copy this, take that as well, where we have create file and we can put it next to it so we see the similarities. And so. And in here, we will need a file, obviously. We take that one and instead of having it like this, we say res plus name plus dot txt. So now we only give it the name and not the file type. So if the, if the level is called level one, then we just pass in a string level one and it will create the file. But let's change the name to new level. And of course, if new level exists oops exists so here's one of those check we can do if the level or the file already exists we don't create it we say system dot out dot print line and we say file plus name already exists and because it already exists we don't want to create anything so we just leave this method by return however if it doesn't exist we say new level dot create new file and we need to surround it with a try and catch can remove that so now we created the file and in here we also want to write to the file, so we're going to use the same method, but we're going to give it some different values. We need a file f, and we're also going to add the integer id r. And we're going to change it to private, because we want, don't want to reach from anywhere else, just from this class alone. Can save it, and we don't need this file, we can remove the text. And instead of the text file, we simply say f for file. Or inside here, we say pw.println. But we need the loop, so for integer i idr. And we pass in i, and then we clean it up a little bit, remove some extra spaces. Can remove that too. Um, so, all right, so now it looks better. And up here, we of course, we need to pass in the file, which was new level and the ID R. And then we format, clean it up a little bit. Oops. And save it. If we check here, we have create level, the text in the name, ID array. We create the file. We check if it exists. If it does, if it does exist, we don't do anything. If it doesn't exist, we create it. Then we want to write to it. We pass in the new file and also the ID array. Make a print writer and we print line, close it, and then it should be good. So if we go into our playing method here and comment this one out, and then we say, uh, let's just make a simple method here. That's uh, create default level done and here we need a int equals new int and we're gonna make it 400 because 20 times 20 is 400 and then we make a loop for int i equals 0 i is less than r dot length i plus plus r i equals 0 save and zero would be grass. All right, so everything will be grass. All right, that's fine enough. 
But now with the array we say load save dot create level and we call it new level and pass in the array. So if we create, if we start now, it should work. I hope so. So just to double check, refresh this and we just have the text, test text file and the text, but we don't have nothing called new level. So let's run it. Seems to work. Go down here, refresh, new level.txt and we can bring it up here. It's all zeros and we should have 400 lines, which we do. Perfect. So now we can create a new level with only zeros. So how do we do to get all of these values into our level array right here? But that we will go through in the next part of this episode. Just like the one before, I have to split this one as well into two because the episodes right now are taking longer and longer because there's more things in them. But if you're watching this the day it will get released, tomorrow the next episodes come out so you don't have to wait for a very long time. But until tomorrow and or the next episode, I wish you all to have a great day, take care now, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.